In this video, we are going to learn how to implement dark mode in a Blazor WebAssembly application. The idea of dark mode is that we are going to allow the user to select the theme of our application, and that theme is going to be the dark theme, in which the background color is going to be dark, and the font color is going to be white when we are in dark mode, and black when we are in light mode. We are going to have two modes, dark and light. So let's do that. The technique that I'm going to use is CSS variables for that. Let's go to the Solution Explorer. And by the way, this is a new Blazor WebAssembly application. I have not made any modifications to it. Now let me go to the www root CSS app CSS. And here we're going to put our CSS variables. With CSS variables, we're going to be able to have variables here in our CSS file. And in that way, instead of having hard-coded colors like this, we are going to have those colors in one place. And in that way, when we want to change a theme, we only have to change the variables. Let's do that. Let's say root here, and I am going to write a few variables like background, and I will say white. And by the way, this is, this is going to be the default values of those variables, which are going to correspond with the light theme. So let me say font color, and I'll say black, of course, because we want to have a white background and a black font color. And I'll also say highlight here for some highlighting. And we are also going to say highlight to, and finally for the links, for the anchors, in light mode, I will use this one. And now in order to apply, dark mode, we're going to use a simple class. We're going to say here dark mode. And in this class, what we're going to do is that we're going to copy these variables from here and we're just going to change the values. So let me just paste these values. The font color is going to be white. The highlight is going to be this one, highlight two, and finally the link. Now, in order to use the variables, we have to do the following. For example, this is an anchor, so I will say bar, and link, which is this variable that we have here. When we are in light mode, we're going to use this value. And when we are in dark mode, we're going to use this value. Now let me write some CSS code, alert secondary. I'll say background color and I'll say bar highlight two and color is going to be our font color. I need to say also table because we have a table in fetch data. Let's say bar font color and also div main background color var background and color var font color. And that should be it on this file. Now something cool about this technique is that it is really easy to apply it to CSS isolation because remember that in .NET 5, they added CSS isolation so components can have their own CSS files and we can use these variables in those CSS files. For example, let's go to the Solution Explorer and let's go to Shirt and let's go to the main layout, but to the main layout resource CSS file. And here we have this top row, this background color. Here I want to use my variable and I can just use it. I can say dash dash and let me copy the name of this variable here, highlight, and let me paste it here. And that's actually it from the CSS point of view. Now we can make a first a small test. Let's go to our main layout file. And let me actually press Ctrl F5 to run our application so that you can see that we have a normal Blazor application. As you can see here, we have our application. Now, if I come here and here I say dark mode, which is this class that changes the CSS variables, we're going to save and now we're going to go back here and now I will refresh. And as you can see, we have this dark mode applied and it is applied in all of our components. So now what we want to have is the ability to change the dark mode dynamically in our application. So for that, we're going to add a small select here so that the user can select between the light and dark theme. So let's do that. Let's come back here and first let me delete this because this is hard coded and let me add a code section. And what I'm going to do is that I will have this class here dynamically, the dark mode class here 
be input dynamically depending on a variable that I will have here, private string selected theme, and by default is going to be light. And now I will say private string, we're going to have a method that is going to be called get class or get CSS class, just to be more clear. And here I will say if selected theme is equal to light, then we're going to return nothing. We're going to return a string empty. Otherwise, we're going to return the dark mode. Now I will put this in here. I will say get CSS class. And now we need our select. So we're going to come here and we're going to say theme. And I will say select and I will add some styling i will say margin left one rem now i want to have a list so that i can iterate it for the options of the select so let me come here private list a string i'll say themes and this will be a new list of a string and it will have two values light and dark now let me iterate the list here for each bar theme in themes and I will say option theme here and value theme here also. And now I want to dynamically determine if this is the selected option. So for that, I am going to create a new method. So I will say is selected theme and I will pass the theme here. And now I will create this method that all that is going to do is to say private bool is select a theme, a string theme, and I will say return theme is equal to the selected theme. So I am saying if this value here is equal to light and this selected theme is equal to light, then we're going to return true, otherwise we will return false. And in that way, we're determining the selected theme for this select. Now I need to work on the on change event of this select so that we can implement some function when the user changes the theme. I will say changing theme and I will copy this and I will come back down here and I will say private void changing themes. I will say change events args and I will say selected theme equal to e dot value dot to a string. And in this way, we are ready for our second test. So let me compile the application. Let me go back here. Let me refresh the page. And we have theme light. And if I select dark, we have the dark mode. And if we select light again, you can see that we can toggle between the two themes. And again, that theme is applied throughout the application. Now, the only problem that we have is that if I refresh the page, the value is lost. Our theme was dark. And when we refresh, we got back to light theme, which is not okay because we want the user to be able to keep their preferred theme. So for that, we're going to use local storage. Now let's go back here and let me go to the index.html file. Let's go here because I want to add some JavaScript code here, some helper functions. I will say function add to local storage and I will receive two parameters which are the key and the value. And I will say here, local storage key equal to value. And we're going to do the same for function read local storage. And we're going to only receive the key and we're going to say return local storage key. And that's it. Now we can go back to the main layout file. I can inject I need to inject the IJS runtime in order to work with JavaScript from our C sharp code. So now let's go back down here and here in changing theme, we're going to say async because we use async programming when using JavaScript interrupt in Blazor. So let's say here task and now I will say await JS invoke void async and I will pass here the name of the function of the JavaScript function that we want to execute, which is this one. Now let me paste that here. And here I will pass the key, which is going to be theme. And the value is going to be selected theme. If you don't like to have 
magic strings like this, then you can do the following. You can come here and say private read only a string key theme. And let me say here theme. And in this way, we have that value in a variable. And now let me put it here. And that's it. Now, the final thing that we have to do is that when the user enters the application, we want to load the theme from local storage. So for that, we're going to say protected override async task on initialize async. And I will say theme from local storage. And I will say equal to await JS invoke async. And we're going to expect a string. Now let me pass the name of the function that we wrote here, read local storage. And let me paste it here. And let me pass the key of local storage that we want to read. And if this is null or empty, null or empty, then we want to do nothing. Let's pass this. But if it is not null or empty, then we want to say select the theme equal to the theme from local storage. And that's actually it. With this, we're ready to go. Let's go back here. Let's refresh the page. And we have light mode. Let's go to dark mode. And this is fine. Let me refresh. And as you can see, we have the dark theme selection being stored in local storage, which now allows us to leave the application and go back to the application. And the theme is going to be the one that the user selected previously. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.